Welcome to Florida Mint on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron, the podcast where Floridians discuss the legends, lore, and crazy stories that always seem to take place in Florida. 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 51, 51. Whoa. Josh beat me to the punch. He yes, said the, he, he said Florida first. I did. Mm. He knew what you were going to say, I guess. Yeah, I've been listening Somehow. attentively. You know me, guys. I know how it is. Josh is wearing uh, one of my favorite shirts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cameron, can you describe it? I barely yeah, fit he, into it. He thinks it's Halloween still, and he's dressed up as a Hopper from Stranger Things. Yeah. So is that the kid season with the three <laughs> with the beach with the beach shirt, Hawaiian shirt. He looks just like him. I do not look like the kid with the teeth. I just no. want to say <laughs> that if you uh, could see Josh, you would love him the way we love him. He has the best style out of the three mm-hmm. of us. He's got thank flamingos you. on his shirt. Picture yeah, Hopper. It's perfect. Okay. Picture Hopper from Stranger Things. Uh, older, though. But but more handsome. Better looking, yeah. Better for looking. Sure. Okay. All right, let's talk some headlines. Yes. All right. You should do three short stories. Three short stories. Yeah. Okay, so I've been doing long ones. Do you want three short ones? Please, okay. you got three? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So we had tons of people write in this week about Josh's golf cart story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The last new, week. The nudie camp. Yep. Yeah. So if you didn't tune in last week, shame on you. Go Moons back. over my hammy. It was nuts. You can skip everything, but listen to Josh's golf cart story. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So Florida woman. She causes a traffic jam on Interstate 95. Nudie. No. Oh, okay. I think she was dressed. <laughs> okay. When she was driving her golf cart in the express lane. Bro, Come those on. don't hit 70. No. Come on. So as the golf cart expert, yes. how yeah. fast would a standard golf standard cart Standard club car uh-huh. you're looking at. 30, 35 tops. Okay, that's not that's good enough. The, for that's the with a high lane. speed motor. That's about what Wayne drives in the express lane. Right. It really <laughs> is. And he stays in the fast lane and then acts like other people are at fault. Yeah. <laughs> Precious cargo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the woman was filmed driving back and forth between lanes recklessly in a pink and white hospital gown. Okay. So, that's, she, so uh, she escaped from somewhere. She, it sounds strike like one it. And yeah. two. So state troopers pulled her over and okay, after finally. investigating, uh, they decided to take her to a hospital and bake her actor oh, no, for her own so safety. Good. So no. I still, in my mind, I'm not picturing her in a golf cart. It still blows my mind. Yeah, that she's in a golf cart because you know that gown was flapping around. <laughs> it, it can't <laughs> stay tight. That can't be a good look. No. It can't stay tight. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez, that's my flap. <laughs> that's my flap. <laughs> All right. So a Florida Gators fan. Okay, not shoots, you. Not me. Definitely not me. Mm-mm. Shoots his friend oh. during an argument over the LSU and Alabama game last week. Those two teams are not the Gators. No, they are not. Uh, I'm so, pretty, pretty big into sports, Wayne. <laughs> I don't know if you knew this. Yeah, he knows the different <laughs> names of them for sure. Uh, a Florida Gators fan, Christopher Honey, uh-huh. uh, was arrested Sunday for the attempted murder oh. of his friend after shooting him in the back of the head and neck Jeez. with birdshot. Oh, Jeez bird Louise. shot, bird shot, bird shot, <laughs> buckshot. buckshot. Yeah, buckshot, buckshot, buckshot. Uh, so it wasn't even about the Gators. No, it wasn't about the Gators. It was just, I mean, those are rivals to the Gators. They're in the right. same conference. They're yeah. all in the this SEC. Guy, but, okay. Uh, That's a different podcast. We don't know what language you're speaking. <laughs> Chris and his friend were arguing over that game, uh, and I guess it got pretty heated. His friend decided to walk away. I guess okay. so. He walked down the driveway, but Chris decided to grab a shotgun. Blap, blap. Right? Yeah. That's how they sound. Grabbed a shotgun and shot him in the back like a coward. I mean, you can't shoot somebody mm. in the back of the neck. Well, he probably did. What's that? And pointed. Yeah. And then blap. Is and that then a goes, bird? And then he goes, who was that? <laughs> so oh, going nice. The, he it, claimed it was a bird. Yeah. Nice. He's going to jail for how long? Uh, I don't know yet. His trial is still set for December. Shame corner? Let's see what the third story holds. Okay. As of right now, I think I think this guy is on the shame corner. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after I saw his Facebook bio Uh uh his name is gator bait chris honey um on on facebook but Mm, his bio says american by birth Uh uh-oh but southern by the grace of god oh there you go nationalism this just kind of gives you a picture all right so next one florida man yay pulled over for speeding so what said that he was racing home after cheating on his wife okay Okay, perfect excuse. Let him go. Yeah. John Pickard was going over 90 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. Whoa, whoa. 
when he was pulled over for speeding and reckless driving. Officer said, uh, officers said he was very agitated and concerned that his wife would find out that he was cheating if he didn't go get home very soon. Huh. Did that excuse work? Uh, it did not. It no. did not. He made the news and got a ticket. I think that's criminal speeding, too. I think it is. Almost well, double. The thing about it is, is now he's going to jail, and now it's on the news yeah. of him saying, I was trying to get home. I yeah. think his wife probably found out. Yeah, body yeah. cam footage. Yeah. Uh, well, officers also found crack cocaine in his pocket Oh, his t-shirt. Yeah. So. That's, a, that's a given. Yeah. But it makes you wonder what the home life is like if he was worried about his wife finding out him cheating and yes. not the fact that he's carrying crack cocaine. Well, yeah. I mean, I think she probably also shared in the crack cocaine. Yeah, he might have yeah. been delivering it. We don't, we don't know. Whoa, that's true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a different crime. Josh, what would you uh, drive over 90 miles per hour to get home for? Uh, that Popeye's fried chicken sandwich. That's it. <laughs> that is it. I would, I would drive that, that fast to get home to see the LSU Kentucky game. Oh, yeah. Or, or, make or sure whoever my, it was. Alabama. Uh, Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> make sure my dogs don't pee on the floor. Oh, that's always a bad thing. At Terrazzo. You know, that Oof. floor is hard to get pee out. All right. So who's going in the Shane corner, corner this week? Middle person. Yeah. Middle so. uh, buckshot guy. Golf yeah. cart lady. She was just going to Sunny Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think she she gets a hard rap. I feel bad for her. I think the guy shooting his friend with a, with a buckshot oh. over a football game. Hmm. There's gets, just no excuse for that. No, I think he should wrestle the... The marital person. Yeah, and what was his name again? Gatorbait something? Yeah, Gatorbait Chris terrible. Honey. What's he, 15? Yeah, yeah, I think uh Gatorbait Chris Honey, if you're listening, bro, uh, the only other people we've had in the corner are like terrorists. So yeah. one the- terrorist and Gatorbait. And Gatorbait Chris <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Gatorbait Honey Boy. So congratulations, bud. Get comfy in there. Hey, fellas. Hey. Uh, this is my segment. Okay. And, uh-huh. You know, I'm always an all-star in my segment. Yes, you That's are. That's right. So I got a letter, uh, multiple pages. Oh, wow. I'm very intrigued. I assume it's going to be a love letter for me. Yep. Uh-huh. Thick boy. First letter, first note, pa- first page says, uh, dear thick boy, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, please hand this immediately to Cameron. Oh. Okay. To me? Okay. Cameron's got mail. I'm going to follow the rules. Okay. So this says, Dear Cameron. Okay. I, feel, I this, like it. I'm yeah, feeling important. I feel uncomfortable, actually. Uh, it says, Dear Cameron, uh, you guys always talk about on the show how old Wayne and Josh are okay. compared yes, to you. we do. Which Thank is you, true. Listener. They are very old. Okay, Young boy. boy. Um, infant boy. So I put together this quiz for Wayne and Josh. Okay. Oh, nice. For, By name. They know yay. our name. For what every child from the 80s should know. Jesus. I mean, I only spent seven years in the 80s. Yeah, I spent five. Well, I, don't, I didn't write it. <laughs> okay. What's this person's name? Yeah. What's uh, their name? It says Timothy Van Winkle. Oh, that's oh, the Van name. Winkle. Yeah. yeah, the whiskey people. Oh, that's not a real name. Timothy, you coward. Use your real name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clark. We know so it you. says I'm supposed to read this. Okay. You guys are supposed to answer, and we're supposed to keep score. How do we ding in or buzz in? Yeah. Uh, let's see. We don't have buzzers. Mm-hmm. Uh, no buzzers here. Just shout a word. Shout okay. an 80s slang word. Crunk. To buzz in. Okay. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, except that's like 98. <laughs> uh, so we have to shout an 80s slang word to buzz in. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, crunk. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right. So, you ready? Uh, yeah. All right. There it is. Are we ready? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. This is new territory for us. Okay. Question number one. All right. Okay. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Tubular. Comes from what TV show? I just buzzed in. Tubular. Uh, z- zingle. <laughs> it's just, Wayne Stern. I just want to be a backup. If no, you get it wrong, no, I want to make ahead. sure I know It's I from uh, Mr. Carter. Incorrect. Josh. Hey, hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh, both incorrect. <laughs> that, that, that show came out in the 90s. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so that, no score for What's that. What's the answer? What's the answer? Different strokes. That's, uh, that was like 70s. That's not the 80s. That's not the All 80s. right. Uh, so, number two. Okay. Where's the beef? Chill. Was the slogan for which fast food chain? Wendy's. Bull crap. Josh Wendy's. is correct. Josh bang, bang, gets bang. the first point. Uh, hey, where's the I beef? Knew, I knew that one. Yeah. As the you old love lady. Wendy's. All right. Question number three. You love that Baconator. Yeah, I do. Uh, Which Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle was cool but rude? Disco. No, I said Calabunga. All right, Wayne. Uh, It was Raphael. Grody. Correct. No. What? Okay. Grody's not the 80s. 
I think it is. <laughs> Grimy. He, was, he was first. Grimy. All right. Number four. Okay. Who sang the song Every Rose Has Its Thorn? Rad. Hey, Josh. What's up, bruh? <laughs> I just said, I just, I, <laughs> <What's> up, <bro? laughs> I want to steal Van Halen. No, Van Halen. All right. No, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> incorrect. Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was poison. Oh no. Okay. Oh, uh, right. we're the worst. Guns yeah, this, N' Roses makes sense well. though. Bro. Okay. Uh, next question. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was the name of Punky Brewster's dog? Who let the dogs out? Go for it. Uh, that's not. That's not the eighties. <laughs> That's like early 90s at best. Boomer. <laughs> no. What? No, incorrect. Oh, I was about to say, if you got that right, I quit the whole show. Guess. What was Punky Brewster? It's a, she had pigtails. Uh, she was adopted. She was adopted. She lived, I think she maybe was homeless. I don't know. Well, yeah. Uh, so you don't know what I'm her not name, even try her dog's dog's name I'm not even going to try. Dumpy. It does start with a B. Uh, Buster. Buster. No, it does, it's actually not like a dog name. Uh, Butch. Uh, Brandon. Bran- what? Brandon. <laughs> I don't think so. Incorrect. If okay. I, I think it's wrong. I think the quiz is wrong. Next. What was Jolt? Oh, uh, 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 hey. Jolt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Cowabunga. No, I already said that. Science. Right. Okay. Uh, Jolt Science was- is not slang. <laughs> <laughs> it was a drink. Wayne. It's a drink. Okay. What kind of drink? No. Got him. What was it known for? <laughs> it was a drink. <laughs> I know it's a drink. I should get the point for that. Uh, what uh, kind of drink? Zynga. Okay. A highly caffeinated drink. That's cola. correct. A highly oh, caffeinated cola. My, I'm quitting the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm, right. I'm putting Greg in my seat. <laughs> okay, so it's two to one. Uh huh. Yeah, easily. All right, next. Just say no. Was an anti drug campaign. Wild West. Jim West. Your mama. Desperado. Started Rough by. Who? No, you don't mean not Josh. A dare campaign. What? You didn't even listen to the question. <laughs> I was doing it was West. started by Ronald Reagan's wife. Who is Nancy, Nancy Reagan. Reagan? Wayne has it correct. Two to two. I'm winning this. Hold on. Uh, who hosted ja. Star Search? Oprah. That's not an answer. That's a slang. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Ed Barker. Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Wayne has it correct. Oh, uh, uh, that's so uh, 80s, bro. I get to tie. <laughs> I get a chance at a tie. No. Uh, Wayne doesn't make the rules. I'm good. Thank I'm, you. I'm, All right. We're still going. All right. Uh, and back to the future. Okay. Yep. How much electric power does the DeLorean need in order to time travel? Do you ever love Hewitt? All right. 88 miles per hour. <laughs> no. No. How much power? <laughs> Jay Love is like 94. Yeah, I love her anyways. I do love her too. Uh, I think it needs 27 jolts. No. <laughs> it would probably work though. Nancy yeah. Reagan. I need an answer in gigawatts. Oh. 27 gigawatts. 50. Are you serious? 500 gigawatts. One point. 21 gigawatts. That's a dumb question. But we're 80s kids, not nerds. Yeah. <laughs> How are we supposed to know that? Look at our outfits, bro. We're cool. <laughs> I know. All right. Who was the main villain on Thundercats? Desperado. Okay. Uh, Dr. Science? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Because they're cats. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> So it's the Thundercats for <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This it's got to be a dog. <coughs> yeah, it's a wolfinator. Lightning dog. No, the no. wolfinator. Mum Ra. No. Mum Ra. No. Yeah, that's it's not it an Egyptian god. I, that's what Timothy put. Him. That's what I have my mom as in the phone. Mum Ra. Mum Ra. Mum Ra. All right, this one's interesting. Okay. Okay. What artist? Had the first ever number one rap single. Patrick Swayze. AOL.com. Josh. I mean, Wayne. That's Wayne. Uh, Number one rap single? The first number one rap single. Coolio. Ice Cube. No. Coolio. Gangster. No, that's 90s. Wayne was close. Um, Okay, hold on. Um, Okay, go ahead. Who is it? Vanilla Ice. No. No way. (laughs) Are you serious? Dude, he's in Florida now. We should should get on A1A Beachfront Avenue. Yeah, he's in Florida now. All right, next. I mean, you got jumped by Shredder. That's true. From a popular 1980s song. Okay. What was Jenny's phone number? 8675309. That's my slang. Also, my answer is 8675309. <laughs> all right, we'll take it. Thank okay. you. I can't even fight that one. It's four to two. Uh, all right. Give me another. All right. Name the Nintendo controller. Pop-up video. That you could wear on your hand. Pop-up video. Also 90s. Uh, uh, 
Power Glove. Yeah, Power no, Glove. That's true. That's right. great. It dude. was in that movie I reviewed on FMOFM.com. <clears throat> FMOFM.com. Launching in 1981. Oh, rest in peace. What American TV network pioneered the music on TV wave? Pop up video. MTV? Yes. Correct. Got him. Okay. You know pop up uh, video? I do remember that. I remember it being solidly 91. <laughs> Which of the following? Now you got to let me get this out. Okay. Okay. Which of the following was not a ghost from Pac-Man? Blinky, mm. Clyde, Inky, or Dinky? Ronald Reagan. Punky Brewster. Dinky. Dinky. Dinky is correct. Wow, Wayne you. has a point. Okay. I need some more 80 slang. What's I'm running score? out. Uh, I'm not sure. Sudden death. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, Next one wins. How many last points? Last yeah. one. You get 10 points for this last question. Perfect. Sounds All fun. Right. <clears throat> All right. I'm ready to buzz in. What popular TV show... Features characters with the names Tommy, Zach, Cal Kimberly, Bob. Billy, and Trini. Lord Zed is my... Uh, Josh. Okay. Power Rangers? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Josh, you are the winner. Josh, you are the winner of the 80s quiz. Okay. Uh, uh, guys, uh, wow. Wow. I'm really, uh, I, I'm thankful. Uh, Chuck, Randy, get up here. Uh, you guys, I'll, I'll talk. So I, I don't know who to thank first. I mean, obviously the Academy, this is a big deal. I spent seven years really hitting the books hard from 83 to 90. Ronald Coburn was born November 13th, 1919 in Covington, Virginia. I got 19, this one, baby. 19. That's ha- an easy one. A hundo. He would be an 100 easy hundo. years old. Happy birthday out there. Yeah. Robert Hundo. Ronald was the type of boy that you would see on television if you're watching an episode of Leave it to Beaver. Nah, oh, okay. I wouldn't watch that. Is it was, that, just is like that a, something from the 80s? Yeah. I'm yeah, not familiar. It's, uh, it's dirty movies. Okay. Right. It was a dirty okay. movie. He was an all-around good kid, um, like very traditional classic Americana background. Okay. Um, but life in Virginia in the early 1900s uh, was difficult for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone in the family was required to work to make sure that they could basically survive. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the world. Yeah. Get a job. Yeah. Like, what the? <laughs> it was no different for Ronald. I mean, they had a hard life. And um, all throughout grade school, uh, Ronald excelled in every subject. Okay. Um, but what stood out the most for him was history. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's History. just knowing things. I mean, it's that not, is just memorizing. You don't have to be good at just anything. memorizing. Yeah, things. I don't think it's anything. Actually, well, I, I think he just really enjoyed it. Like he he loved reading about um, the American Revolution, but most importantly, he loved studying the American Wild West. Oh, nice. Jim West, okay. Desperado. Right. So it's important to realize that for Ronald, the Wild West was only a few decades prior. Okay. Because he was born in 1919. Um, oh, so, yeah. wait, when, were, when was the Wild West? When the United States, the time frame that uh, we're referring to when we say the Wild West, is 1865 until 1895. 18, oh, okay. Yeah, so I that's heard, not that long. I it, heard it wasn't even real. Like It was like it was fake. It was all mental. Well, it's like a 30-year period um, after the American Civil War um, that basically um, defined American culture in almost like stereotype for a mm-hmm. while. So nice. when you watch foreign films and you see like an American, yeah. they've always got like two guns in each yeah. hand. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, yeah, a big cowboy what, hat. What was that? Wow. <laughs> What wow. happened there? Boy, like, yo, yo, yoing. <laughs> yeah, like, like spaghetti westerns. Yeah, okay. That's what he's going for. Yeah. Um, so but this was Ronald's favorite time in history. Okay. This was the way he would kind of escape mentally growing up. Like he yeah. just loved the Wild West. Nice. Um, so uh, he graduated high school um, eventually and he went to Beckley College. <laughs> okay. Uh, where he met his wife, Jeanette. And from there, he enlisted in the United States Navy and he served as a pilot instructor until wow. 1945. Cool. Okay, yeah, so he's just... Uh, wait, 1945, that was during World War II, right? Yeah. Look, oh. Another guy who likes history. Wow, he, so he loves hey. it. Wait, he died during World War what? II? What? No, no one said that. Nobody uh, even oh, said okay. that. I, I he, think he I heard Not everybody died <laughs> no, in World War II. He served until 1945 as oh, a okay, pilot okay, instructor. Okay. Yeah. You can leave the military. <laughs> <laughs> but when he returned home, uh, he decided that he wanted to start a business. Amen. Okay. Um, now, this wasn't his background. He had no education specializing in business, and no one in his family did either, um, but that's what he wanted to do. Hey, you, you know, follow your dreams. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, in 1946, Ronald Coburn started a construction company, and it did surprisingly really mm-hmm. well. That's the thing I think I want 
my man to have experience in <laughs> when he's starting a business. We've never built a house before, but do you want to pay us to build your house? Yeah, yeah it's right. my dream, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like it's a time period where like that was like a baseline survival skill. Yeah. Okay. Like building a house. Hey, do you want to live? Yeah. Learn how to build a house. Build this house. <laughs> uh, but instead of investing the money that he made from construction um, back into the construction business, yeah. he decided to open up other businesses. Okay, that's, so, that's a way to do stuff. Within like a year, he opened a taxi company. Okay. Oh, wow. A restaurant, a clothing store. And when all of these businesses took off, he opened up an investment firm. These are all taken what off. in the world? Yeah. <laughs> so he's kind of got this like kind of penchant for like business. Like he's really good. Yeah. Okay. Like starting companies and, and uh, help them, helping them flourish. He's mm-hmm. just bored, it sounds like. Really? Yeah, bored. I know. Uh, so with all of his businesses, um, he's made enough money now to basically open up an investment firm and invest in other startups. And so usually Jeez. at this point, like you kind of start seeing, you know, a pattern here, like he's making all this money. Uh-huh. Yeah. Obviously, is, like he's going to do something really predictable. Time to turn evil. This is Shark Tank. Right. This is Shark Tank. Yeah, exactly. Shark Tank. Well, Ronald decided to defy expectations. And instead of continuing to invest in companies and start new companies, yep. he purchased a huge plot of land in central Florida and he opened up a theme park that was a Wild West kind of like old Whoa. Western theme adventure huh. land. Well, okay, hmm. so my mind just immediately goes to Disney, but that's obviously not right. And now Disney the Wild hasn't West arrived is, yet. Is 40 this is years before Disney. This is prior Disney. This is the Wild West was 40 years in the past. 50 years in the past from uh, this guy at now? Thi- at this point, yeah, it's, it's 40, 50 years. So we would be like 1970. We would open a theme park about 1970 if it's us. Right. Oh, if it's us, yeah. Yeah, yeah if it was that, us. That would be weird. In the early 1960s, Ronald Coburn cleared a forested plot of land, mm-hmm. and he developed an entire Wild West town where people could come and forget about their lives for a day and instead role play as if they were living in the old American West. Okay, okay. I would do that I if would I had a 1970s. Yeah. Park. So, it, if it sounds familiar, it's because it's almost the exact plot of the TV show Westworld. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Westworld, the show, is based off of a movie called Westworld that came out in 73. No. Mm-hmm. And Ronald's theme park debuted a decade prior to this. Uh, what? It, it had guests that were basically from Hollywood, from California nonstop. <sighs> so, it's not a stretch to think. Okay. That the TV show and the movie got this idea based from from his uh, park, yeah. from Robert's theme park. Okay. I would say it probably happened like that. So Ronald's theme park was called Six Gun Territory. Whoa, six! Beow, 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 Hold beow. on, this place sounds amazing. So when you first arrived, uh, you would be over a mile away from the actual park. Okay, um, guests were put, Jeez. guests were put on a train and then transported to the park. Mm-hmm. So when you arrived, you were greeted by like outlaws and like mm-hmm. can can dancers. Whoa! Like nice. the can can yeah. dancers, you know the the dresses and the high stockings. You've uh-huh. you've seen yep. movies, yeah. yeah. The, the cans, right? Uh, <laughs> but then once you got off the train, uh, what you had was a very like real Wild West experience, like minus the dysentery. Okay, oh, no, good. that's good. always good, right? Not to have that, you know, it wouldn't take one, uh, you know, bad boy of the Wild West to get me to turn around. He'd be like, it, "Get on out of here, sit and slicker," and I'd be like, "Okay, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done out of here. I'm leaving." It's a good experience. How, uh, Westworld opened up with them coming in. On the train? On the train. Oh, that's absolutely. Brilliant. Hell of a spoiler thieves. alert. Yeah. So uh, the buildings were actually fully developed. So this wasn't like a movie set where you have like a dirt road and like nice. the front of the buildings mm-hmm. would be constructed. Yeah. These were fully functioning um, like businesses. And so like Ronald had um, a town construction that like there was like a barber locally. Mm-hmm. He would have at the Wild running West. Running businesses. So he ran it in there. Yeah. So you would you could go and get your hair cut in like a barber like themed Wild West style. I mm-hmm. want that Wild West haircut. I'm yeah. not going to just any barber. Yeah. I want that bowl cut. Yeah. Bingo. What's it look like? What's that Wild West haircut uh, look like? Just shaggy. Yeah. Shaggy. Just so shaggy. Good. Yeah. So sweaty, greasy. Yeah. The uh, Six Gun um, territory also had a local church. It had a jail, uh, an operating saloon, and a Actually. Wells Fargo bank. Oh, authenticity. Mm-hmm. Which is hilarious. Yeah, they're going to... Uh, never mind. They're one of the oldest banks. <laughs> yeah, they're going to uh, so, uh, mortgage uh, take mortgages off people's house oh, and kick them out. Oh, don't start. Okay, That's it. sorry. <laughs> so there was a stage <laughs> where um, like live acts would perform completely in character, but more importantly, you had actors and staff roaming the park with the guest in character. Wow. So these actors, they would constantly be like kind of dressed up and acting along with the guests, and they would encourage the guests to play along. So everything about it was like, you know, thematic. Yeah, so they, you're just like completely immersed. Right. I, I, I like the idea of this and the guy going, no, play along. Yeah, and right. Like, okay, so you want, you want my wallet? Yeah. And he's like, yes, I want your wallet. 
Well, like for Ronald, this is like a dream come true because like his fantasy growing up was like this whole like cowboy land and now he's living it and he's got other people kind of experiencing it as well. Um, and so like he didn't want you to get off the train and be like in theme park mode. He wanted you to get off the train and like immerse yourself mm-hmm. uh-huh. in what was happening. So, for example, uh, it, it, this probably wouldn't fly in this day and age. Yeah. Um, but there was a saloon, like a bar that was totally for kids. Cool. Um, okay. So when the parents would I'm go and drink at the yeah. real saloon. Yep. Um, the kids could walk in and they would be like, hey, young poke or whatever. Say. <laughs> Kid actors yeah. too? <laughs> it, well, no, it was adults and they cool. would give them root beer. But uh, then like if the kid ordered another, another one, they'd be, they would cut them off. Nice. And be like, nice. Yeah, that's brilliant. Oh, you've had yeah. a rough day, you know, whatever. So the kids got to really experience it as well. That'd be fun. But what was fascinating is there wasn't a feature at the park that duplicated itself like the following day. So it was okay. always random. Wow. So whenever you went, you would always have a different experience. So for example... You may be walking into a restaurant and then like a gunfight breaks out next to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, but the next day it won't happen again. You can't say, hey, come back on Sunday. You got to see this gunfight. Right. At 1145, yeah. there's a gunfight. Oh, nice. Um, so like another example of a random event, the train ride into town will sometimes get hijacked. That's cool. Okay. And would take you to a That's different cool. part of the park. So Ooh. you started off in a different area. Wow. It sounds like a really unplanned thing, like yeah. not on purpose. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, guys, I, I only had 10 days of script here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, y- y'all just free y'all just do whatever. freestyle yeah well the thing is if like if if the each day is different then you're gonna buy multiple tickets to yeah, kind of experience go back. Yeah. you know so if people are, are coming multiple days and buying multiple t- you know tickets mm-hmm. that means robert's rolling ronald's rolling i hear rolling. tomorrow they're gonna be bank robber <laughs> right yeah <laughs> and they're like what i gotta come back tomorrow so now ronald's rolling and like all kind of money that's awesome because people are coming mm-hmm. like left and right and so he uses this money to open a second oh, a second wild west theme park in north carolina Okay. He actually purchased an entire mountain Jeez. called Jeez. called Buck Mountain. Um, and he built a smaller version of Six Gun Territory there in North Carolina. Those were the days when you could buy a mountain. Yeah. I know. You, yeah, you can't. Uncle the, Sam. the American dream. Uh, but at the same time, he's also, while he's constructing the second park, he's adding more and more attractions to the one in Central Florida. He okay, wants to so expand it. It's still doing well. It's still the this main is one. Yeah. This is he's making it bigger. Um, the reason why he wanted to expand so much is because nearby, just a few miles away, uh-huh. in a town called Ocala, there was a new park called Silver Springs uh-huh. that was opening uh-huh. up. Uh-huh. Monkey Island. Yeah. We well, actually, they took the other, uh, you know, ter- terrain. They went water, right? They went right. All aquatic. We actually covered Silver Springs way back in episode seven well, uh, of our show. How was that one? I know. Good. Was good. Yeah, with the monkeys. I remember the show, but how was the recording? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Ronald, he he had like competition at this point, uh-huh. kind of locally. And so he needed to keep adding stuff to the six-gun territory. <laughs> so they added a fairgrounds that had rides for kids, still yeah. all Western themed. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was really interesting is he added a Native American outpost. Uh-oh. So when I first read that, I was like kind of hesitant. I'm like, that's going to go bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, but especially considering it's in the 60s and things were kind of, you know, rough yeah. back then. Um, but he actually said he wanted it to be like ran and operated um, by actual Native Americans who would just come and teach history about their people. That's okay. cool. I okay. like that. So Ronald insisted that the actual Native Americans like come and teach the guests, nice. but then interact and like show them their culture and their lifestyle and give like historical lessons the entire time. Um, because a lot of the times, like if you watch old Western movies, mm. um, it's kind of like very cut and dry. Like it's cowboy versus Indians. Just yeah. like drums. Yeah, it's 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 like incredibly like stereotypical, but Ronald like he's a lover of history, and so he wanted it to be very authentic and done in an honorable way. Okay, um, to the people, so that was really I neat. Like this guy, uh, so he at, it was all going so well. He wanted to basically build kind of this advanced version of the park for adults. Okay, and again because it's a, because it's the sixties, yeah. he's not saying kids can't go because kids mm-hmm. I don't know how kids are even survive because kids then. were alive in the Wild West. Yeah, <laughs> right. But he was like, look, if you're looking for an adult time, you're going to want to go to this new section of the park. Yeah. Oh, if you're yeah. right. Hedonism, too. It was a fully functioning Mexican border town. That's okay. what I'm talking about. Nothing gets cracking like a Mexican <laughs> border town. <laughs> so a lot of Wild West stories actually take place along the Rio Grande and uh-huh. the southern border of the United States. And so it was just like particularly lawless. Um, yeah. And so whenever you go to this portion of the park, it was like alcohol and like Jack semi high. kind of like racy, like... Mm-hmm. Like kind of stuff, and but so in a swamp, but yeah, yeah in a swamp. <laughs> but at, so this at this point, like the park's thriving. Yeah, like it's an actual like functioning town. It's insane that 
We have no idea. Yeah, I've never heard of ever this. Ever existed? Well, he was concerned uh, because you know, as the park's expanding and growing, um, he kind of caught wind that there was a cartoonist in California okay. who was considering an expansion of his theme park okay. mm-hmm. into Central Florida. That guy. Huh. And so, as it turns out, Ronald's fears were proven to be true mm. because in 1971, Walt Disney opened up in Orlando, Florida, uh, Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. And so, basically. Three years after that, Ronald Coburn's Six Gun Territory went bankrupt. Oh, no. You know what? It's weird. Like, uh, an episode about Walt, and I'm like, love the guy. Yeah. But now, this guy, I'm like, not man, so, screw that guy. Not so much. <laughs> well, what's fascinating is um, one of the first attractions in Walt Disney World Orlando Don't even. was Frontierland. What a copy okay. cat. Okay. And so, obviously, Disney does everything better. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so, within a couple of years, Six Gun Territory is kind of, you know, I wanted to dead go. and gone. As big and popular as Six Gun Territory was in its heyday, uh, it's absolutely non-existent now. Um, the buildings were torn down. The merchandise was sold off as collectibles. And no. the train was disassembled and scattered across the state of Florida. Uh, what was once a Wild West town is now actually a pristine shopping mall. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> this is worst. So, this is a sad story. I know, but not all is lost because there's actually quite a few people who have very fond memories of the theme park. Okay. Um. So we get like hundreds of emails a week and they usually concern like headlines and current events. Um, but people also will request like topics for stories. Mm-hmm. And this has come up quite a few times, actually. Um, and with it, people have sent in like their experiences there. And so I responded to one lady. Um, named Kathy and asked her if she wouldn't mind sharing. And so she sent in. Hi, Kathy. Uh, hello, Kathy. Yes. Uh, Kathy actually lives now in North Florida, uh, but she hasn't always lived there. She recently retired to Florida, but she was born and raised in Alabama. Congrats. Mm. And uh, she wrote this about her experience okay. at the um, Six Gun Territory. So I want to read this real fast. Kathy said, growing up, my family would travel to Florida on vacation every year. Uh-huh. I remember being eight years old and stepping off the train at Six Gun Territory like it was yesterday. Oh, my gosh. The roads were dusty, and the (laughs) actors were all very convincing. To a little girl, it was easy to believe that I had just stepped back in time. Okay. I remember shopping at the retail store before playing checkers out in front of the saloon with my brother, Uh while my dad and my uncle went inside to have a drink. Just as we were getting lost in our game, a gunfight broke out down the street. Jackpot. A man in full cowboy attire rushed over to my brother and I and encouraged us to hide behind two barrels that were nearby so that we could watch the shootout safely from a distance. Wow. Out of all my vacations as a child, I will never forget that summer in 68 when I traveled back to the Old West with my family in Central Florida. That's awesome. You know what type of memory I would keep also? Uh, A cowboy shootout that I had to hide (laughs) behind barrels. Yeah. So that was from Kathy in Alabama. We really appreciate that. That's a really cool story. Uh, Ronald Coburn actually had a lot of successful businesses. In fact, the only one that ever went under was Six Gun Territory, Mm. and that was because of Walt Disney. No no fault of of really, you know, Ronald's. Um, But he was a lifelong Florida man and a remarkable individual, and that is the story of his Six Gun Territory. We need a a statue or something of him. Yeah, Yeah, I know. And this is one of the first times I've had actual, like, FOMO about, like, a... You know, a location that doesn't exist yeah. anymore. Like, I would love to have done that. I would love to have tried it. I think I'd be bored after half an hour. I mean, I think it was the word checkers that put me over the edge. I was like, boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then gunfight. I, yeah, that's I put me back. Hide behind a barrel. Ice cream. Get your hair cut. Yeah, ice cream. Haircut. Go to the saloon. Well, it's been a good week. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning Very good in. Week. Um, check out fmofm.com for all of your Florida man needs. We have a donation button there on the front page. If you like the show and you believe in what we are doing, Mm -hmm. uh, please consider supporting us. Or if you hate the show, if you hate the show, there's a button for that as well. Yep. Um, and, uh, check us out on social media. It's fmofm podcast across all of the platforms. We love you. Thank you for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week. 